Hello and welcome from everyone at Manchester Folk Festival. Although we're disappointed not to bring our usual three days of music from great venues across Manchester, we're thrilled to bring this event from our festival hub venue home. As part of English Folk Expo, Manchester Folk Festival presents a broad programme of folk and acoustic music to attract new audiences to discover new artists. In this spirit, we are thrilled to launch the official Folk Albums Chart, which we know will enable Irish and UK folk and acoustic artists to reach new audiences across the UK. Tonight's stream includes closed captioning, which is available for viewers on YouTube, and we're really delighted to be joined by Mark Radcliffe this evening to help with tonight's show. Thank you very much, David. Hey, we're actually out and meeting people and having live music. We have a uh, tiny, specially invited, socially distant audience as well. So um, let's hear from you. There you go. There you go. How we have forgotten and craved the adoration of crowds. Um, good evening. We are live here at home in Manchester. Um, as David said, it would have been Manchester Folk Festival and this would have been the big Saturday night. I dare say we'd have had a schooner of sherry by now. Um, uh, but nevertheless, we have an exciting event. Again, as David said, we are bringing you the uh, first official folk albums chart. So uh, thank you for joining us on this auspicious occasion. Um, uh, we have got uh, live in the venue music very shortly from Vri. We have The Breath, we have Faye Heald and her band, plus we also have a contribution exclusively from Chris Drever. We have some special interviews, um, including, uh, well, Stuart Lee once called her the Queen of England. Shirley Collins is going to be joining us, and we'll be able to see if she's made the charts, possibly for the first time in her career. I'll uh, check with her in a bit. Um, uh, but uh, we will bring you the first top five. 40 segmented, building up to the big announcement of uh, number one, and it's just great to be together. Um, it's been such a tough time for all kinds of people, but musicians and crews, everybody involved in gigs and promotions and productions and venues, so tough. So it's just great to be here to at least have this. So let's start off with some live music. Um, uh, Patrick Rhymes, Jordan Price Williams, and uh, Anarin Jones, they are free. Um, their debut album is called Tea in Tadai, which which means House of Our Fathers. They received Best Album and Best Traditional Welsh Language Track in the Wales Folk Awards and a nomination at the BBC Radio 2 Folk Awards for Best Traditional Song. So kicking us off tonight, free. Hunthi meets the usk at the foot of the Bratton Beacons. I know this place well. Twenty years ago, my father was a soldier in the Watton, Bracken's 18th century army barracks. Two hundred years before him, another T. Williams, in the same barracks, was writing a farewell ballad on the 23rd Regiment's departure from the town of Brecon to the island of Guernsey. In it he writes of the beauty of the land, the virtues of its people, and of Urbanae Brenin Bryniae, the mighty Brecon beacons, smiling down on the town as they depart to fight and to be buried in foreign fields. Come on, 
Uh, thank you very much and a very good evening. What a treat to be here, as Mark said, just sort of let out for the evening, off the leash, and to be able to play some music together. Um, as George was saying, that was a, uh, an old Welsh traditional song called Aper uh, which we found in the collection of Maria Jane Williams. Um, we're going to finish off our little segment for the evening by playing an old favourite of ours. Um, this little tune very nearly became the Welsh national anthem. Um, it's a beautiful melody uh, called um, Glan Method Muin, um, which is quite hard to translate, but it's sort of, it's an ode to being gently drunk, which we think would have been a very appropriate national anthem. We're, it's a shame that the powers of that be didn't agree.
Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Uh, Vree Live Music uh, kicking us off tonight here at the uh, official Folk Album Chart launch. Um, let's talk to someone who might be in it. We don't know yet. <laughs> let's say hello to Shirley Collins at home. Hey, Shirley, how are you? Hello, Mark. I'm excited to be here. And congratulations to you all. And that was such a lovely music to start with. Yeah, it was, it, it yeah, was great. Fabulous. It's just great to be here and sharing space and music with people. It is. It, yes. It, 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 it's lovely. Um, now, this might be a rude question. Have you ever been in the charts? I was in... F Roots charts at one point. Right, um, okay. Some time ago, but uh, no, not. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what, what do you think about the concept of having a, a, a folk albums chart? I mean, some people think that folk music and charts are odd bedfellows. I don't. I think it's great to see how you're doing and maybe have the chance to be in the top yeah. ten or whatever. No, I agree. I mean, we all want <laughs> to be recognised and have some sort of success. And it's nice that that's acknowledged. And it sort of brings us closer to the mainstream as well. You know, they've got their awards. Why not one for us as well? well I think yeah. it's a great idea. Yeah, good, good. Now that um, um, your um, album Lodestar, which, which yes. was very, very well received, your first for, I think, 38 years. Um, <laughs> yes. it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lovely album. <laughs> and you were, you were pleased with it and you're proud of it. But you... You felt you had more to give this time with heart's ease. I did. I, you know, I was more confident. I'd still got songs I longed to sing, longed to record. Um, no, it's, 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 it's an improvement on Low Star. I mean, <laughs> not that Low Star <laughs> was bad or anything. Um, but no, it, it just feels more confident album. Yeah. And uh, just moving on from there as well, you know, keep going. I mean, because Lodestar was recorded at home, wasn't it? You didn't feel it you didn't was. feel up to going to studios and sort of fully embracing it again, did you? At that point, no, I was I was too nervous to do that. I I didn't want to bump into an engineer who would think I, you know, what what's this old lady singing these funny old <laughs> songs for? Um, I didn't quite have the nerve, so we did it all at home, and it was it was great fun. And uh, but I knew for the second one, I really wanted to go into a studio and sort of be proper. And how was that? It was wonderful. I mean, we had Al Scott as a marvellous sound engineer, um, Al from... Um, for Oyster Band. Oyster Band, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and he was sympathetic. He knew the music. He understood everything. He and Ian Carey, my musical director, are great pals, you know, so they, yeah. it, it, everyone was really happy there and uh, it was all relaxed and the sound quality is so good from a proper studio, isn't it? I, I, absolutely. And I know that when you were away from singing for so long, you never stopped loving songs, accumulating songs, hearing songs and thinking there's something special about that. You've got a great memory for songs, haven't you? I have, um, fortunately. I mean, when I wasn't singing for 38 years, I was still learning songs um, and listening to songs, mostly from field recordings, you know, because that's where most of my music comes from. And, but it never occurred to me that I would, I would record again. So it was just, you know, it's such a marvellous opportunity to do it again. And there's, these songs I just want people to hear yeah, because I love them so much. Was it difficult narrowing them down to an album's worth? Did you have sort of 20 or 30 <laughs> songs? Did you have a big long list yeah. and you kept crossing yes. them out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there's still a list. <laughs> there, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you record more for, than you used for this album? Is there stuff still to come or no, you've just got to start again no, next time? we're just going to start again, um, if, if there is another album, um, you know, we'll start again with the new list, but I must say we're already practicing the songs and Ian's writing the arrangements and uh, it's, it's just so lovely to be sort of immersed in it once more. Are you disappointed, like, you know, like so many other musicians, not to be able to play to people? I mean, you must have been looking forward, oh. with, with a new record, you're ready to go, aren't you? Well, of course you are, and it's really disappointing and so frustrating. Um, you know, we longed to get out there with, with the Lodestar band and just play for people once more. I mean, because after Lodestar, we did quite a few concerts. You know, we, yeah. we were in Germany and Sweden and all over the British Isles. And, you know, you just think, oh, God, you know, please give us a break. But as I said to you before, Mark, when we last spoke... yeah. It's the younger people that I really feel sorriest for because they're just starting out. They need to establish their careers. They need to play and they can't. I know. It's, it's heartbreaking. 
I know. But in some senses, you're just starting yeah. out because you had all that time off. So this is, this is a new career. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, I look at it that way then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there's the film and the book as well. I mean, do you feel, because of that long layoff, do you feel very much that now is the time to make up for lost time? Certainly do. And while there's time as well. <laughs> <laughs> So what have you been spending your time doing then with you in the absence of touring? You, what do you do at home? Where are you? Near the South Downs, aren't you? I'm very, yes, yeah, surrounded by the South Downs yeah, in Lewis, yeah, in yeah, East Sussex. Yeah. No, I mean, the thing is that uh, the promotion for Heartsease has been so considerable. I've, I've spent so many days sometimes doing two or three interviews, you know, by... Yeah. I finally managed to learn to do Zoom, well, but otherwise... Yeah. We've all had to learn you know, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but it, that came from all over the world, you know, from America, Spain, Australia, yeah. where I, you know, had a, a wonderful inter a start to an interview. I don't know if I told you this, that um, the woman who was interviewing me said, now, Shirley, is it true that you and your sister, Dolly, as teenagers, canoed down the Amazon? <laughs> What do you say to that? I, just, I mean, I thought it was a secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to know that people are there all across the world. I mean, that's been the good thing. We've, we've all had to find new ways of connecting, but it's connecting globally with this way, isn't it? It is, and you could make such good friends with people. You know, even yeah. if it was one interview, you just have a lovely conversation um, with whoever's talking to you. And this is sort of lovely instant rapport of, are often you know yeah. that um and, and people are just interested and i think people in a way are keener on doing all this now because we can't meet you yeah. know and people have found a way of doing it that really makes it sort of intimate and interesting and, and very cheerful yeah and it's a, just a good way to sort of connect with the world and as you say, we've all had to learn new skills, zooming and everything. I'm very bad with I'm very bad with technology. And when I uh, when I used to shout one of my children to come and sort it out, which they do with a disgusted look in about thirty seconds. But they've all left to go to university now, so I have to learn to do it myself. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm fortunate that I've got Ian Keary here with right. me, um, and and he sets everything up, and I just Good. he sets up, I sit down. You know, <laughs> sounds perfect. Um, it's lovely to see you, Shirley, and we await with interest to see where Heart's Ease appears in the charts. Oh, I'm, I'm touching wood. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Thanks. congratulations yeah, again. It's, it's right. a splendid initiative. Well all done. Right. Thanks very much. It's lovely to see you, Shirley. That's enough. Yeah, bye-bye. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye -bye. Okay. Um, uh, the Thanks great much Shirley indeed, Collins Mark. joining uh, us George. from Lewis. So um, here we go. Let's start off by giving you some of the first positions in the charts. Uh, this is going to be brought to us by a podcaster, Matthew Bannister. He used to be my boss at Radio 1. He had the good sense to give me a show every day. What a fine man. Um, Folk on Foot is his podcast and during lockdown uh, Folk on Foot festivals raised a quarter of a indeed. million pounds for artists so that is a brilliant effort so thanks to Matthew and everybody involved with that Folk on Foot will be producing the monthly official Folk Albums chart show and Matthew will be giving us the top 40 so here we go Thanks very much indeed, Mark. It's a, a joy to be working with you after all these years, and you haven't changed a bit. Now, I'm delighted to say that Folk on Foot will be producing a monthly official Folk Albums chart show, and it'll come out on our YouTube channel and our podcast feed, and we'll count down the whole top 40 of the albums that have made that month's chart. But we'll also focus on the new releases, the artists who've broken into the chart for the very first time. And with their permission, we'll show their videos, we'll play their album tracks, we'll maybe get some live performance and maybe we'll do some interviews with them too. So it'll be the first and best way to find out who has got into the official Folk Albums chart every month. And you'll find it on the Folk on Foot YouTube channel and podcast feed. But without more ado, Let's get our very first chart rundown. At number 40, Martin Joseph reacts to the impact of the pandemic in his EP, When We Get Through This. At 39, it's David Keenan's spontaneous recordings in the Dublin Mountains, A Beginner's Guide to Bravery. At 38, Hill of Beans is Ralph McTell's first original material for nine years. 37 is another folk legend, Richard Thompson, recorded live at Nottingham's Rock City back in 1986. 
At 36, Dervish assemble an all-star cast of collaborators to celebrate their 30th anniversary with the great Irish songbook. Bioga are at 35 with Carousel, a mini-album which, like their appearance on Ed Sheeran's Galway Girl, continues to combine folk and pop. 34 sees Elephant Sessions creating an album which fuses acid jazz, funk and electro beats, all centred around a Scottish traditional heart. At 33, Maria McKee reflects on the changes in her life since she came out as queer in La Vita Nuova. At 32, Scarivore reminds us of the power of performance as they are live across Scotland. While at 31, Wankarth celebrate all things Welsh on their eponymous album. At 30, another entry for David Keenan with Alchemy and Prose, a series of live performances, including his show at the Olympia Theatre in Dublin in January 2020. 29 is Pandemic Songs, Rob Johnson and the Irregulars giving their take on the impact of COVID-19. At 28 come the Unthanks with Diversions Volume 5, live and unaccompanied, recorded on their tour last year. Sam Sweeney is at 27 with Unearth Repeat, which combines the groove and swagger of English traditional music with the energy of the Celtic and Scandinavian music scenes. At 26, we have Fairport Convention's 30th studio album, Shuffle and Go. At 25 is Battlefield Dance Floor, the 18th studio album from the mighty Show of Hands. At 24, Lewis Watson explores the nature of relationships in the love that you want. At 23, Bibio blend traditional folk with soundscapes and field recordings in Sleep on the Wing. At 22, Richard Dawson tells powerful stories of modern Britain in 2020. And at 21, it's Corrine Polwart reimagining her favourite Scottish pop songs in her Scottish songbook. I'll be back later to reveal the top 20 entries in the first ever official Folk Albums chart. Thank you very much, Matthew, and uh, thanks to uh, all concerned with folk on foot. Um, uh, now then, uh, there we're going to have an artist who's uh, sent us something from home in Glasgow. He is from Orkney, originally spent a lot of time in Shetland, he is uh, also one third of the Mighty Life prospect that is the band Lau. It's Chris Drever, of course, and um, uh, maybe his new album, Where the World is Thin, uh, will uh, figure in the next um, official folk albums chart. We will have to wait and see. Um, but uh, Chris is joining us from uh, home in Glasgow. He's recorded two tracks for us. And the first is I'll Always Leave the Light On. Serpent to the southern sea, and from crisis to serenity, from up here where I call my own, and the sea that has become known, nothing stirs, nothing sleeps, nothing lies. Nothing weeps Strong men come Strong men go Rockets fly Rivers flow I'll always leave the light on I'll always leave the light on Fiddlehead fans 
San Francisco or the path of the Thames. Someone's shouting, someone's dying, someone's preaching, someone's lying. Strong men come, strong men go, rockets fly. A song called I'll Always Leave the Light On from my brand new record, uh, Where the World is Thin. And uh, I'm going to do an old uh, song now. This is um, probably an ancient uh, team rowing song from the Gaelic tradition. Oh, 
At 20 is Old Wow, Sam Lee's moving tribute to the natural world. At 19, Lancome take the traditions and bend them into something new, dark and otherworldly in the live long day. Joshua Burnside examines the human condition in his album Into the Depths of Hell at number 18. At 17, the first of two entries in the chart for Kate Rusby, philosophers, poets and kings. At 16, Cures What Ails You is Bristol-based Longest John's giving sea shanties a modern makeover. At 15, Liam McGrandle's lockdown album, The Place You Call Home. Skip Inish celebrate their 20th anniversary by getting their album Steer By The Stars into the chart at 14. At 13, Billy Martin's Feeding Seahorses By Hand, most of which was recorded in two weeks on a four-track tape recorder at producer Ethan Johns' house. At number 12, a reissue of a classic album from 50 years ago, Davy Graham's brilliant The Holly Kaleidoscope. And at 11, another classic reissue, Christy Moore's album Prosperous is available again after nearly 40 years, this time on 180 gram coloured vinyl. I'll be back with the top 10 later. Thanks again, Matthew, and uh, thank you very much to Chris Drever uh, in the company of his uh, wonderful cheese plant. Is that a cheese plant? I'm not sure. I'm not very up on my house plants. Um, I'm pretty sure it wasn't a yucca anyway. But uh, thank you very much to Chris. So um, uh, we've got someone who's in the charts. We can go over to um, Northern Ireland and uh, we can join uh, Joshua Burnside. Hey, Joshua. Hey, how's it going? Really good, thanks. How's the, are you satisfied with that number eighteen in the? You're in the top twenty, mate. Yeah, no, it's uh, I'm I'm yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I was I'm kind of a little bit embarrassed actually because uh, I'm a, I'm a massive fan of that album by Lankham, uh, Live Long Day, and uh, I think they should be they should be higher up <laughs> than me. <laughs> oh, well, you know, they've, they've got some work to do, you know, don't worry about it. Um, where, where are you geographically in Northern Ireland at the moment? Where, where do you live? Where do you operate from? I'm in, uh, I'm in my little studio right now in East Belfast. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that, um, is that where this record was made? Yes. This room you can see behind me, uh, full of um, random objects and things falling over and stuff is... Uh, it's my studio. It's a bit of a tip, unfortunately, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the great thing about this, and one of the particular reasons for talking to you, apart from the fact you've made a lovely record, with beautiful artwork, I'm always telling people the artwork is so spectacular. But oh, um, cool. um, one of the good things is, I think, about you, you do it, you self-release it, and it, it's good to know that you can get to number 18 in this album chart on your own. Yeah, sure. I mean, I've got... Uh, I don't think anyone gets anywhere really on their own, you know. Um, I've got a lot of support from, you know, my managers and uh, um, publishers and different people that have, you know, been helping me for the last few years. And, but you haven't uh, got a big record label pushing you no. or anything. I mean, no, it is, it is a self-generated thing to some degree, isn't it? Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, I think and I quite like it that way. You know, um, I'm not, not having a someone breathing down my neck telling me tell me what to do it's been it's quite liberating to be able to just do your own thing not that i've ever had not that i've ever had a massive <laughs> able to do that so i'm just like you know um 
yeah, it works for me. Yeah, yeah. Do you work a lot in that room on your own, or do you have do you have help recording? No, I, I pretty much uh, produce everything myself. Um, there was a couple of tracks that I did in a different studio because we wanted to track a full band kind of live, and uh, my setup here is quite small. So we, we did the drums and bass and stuff in a, in a different studio for two of the songs, but the majority of the album was just yeah. where I'm sitting right now. Yeah. How's, how, how's lockdown been? Obviously all musicians are frustrated at not being able to go out and play and meet people, but it mm. sounds like in the current circumstances, you're someone who sort of um, self-isolates a lot of the time anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite used to being <laughs> on my own here for hours and hours and hours. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, during lockdown, this building that I'm in, uh, which is a, uh, it's an art collective. It's an old, it used to be an old school that uh, was lying derelict for a long time and a bunch of artists came in and taken it over and, and that's where my little studio is. Um, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, we, we closed the building down um, during lockdown so I couldn't get in to do, do that. So I had to grab as many mics and take them, um, take them home so I could do a bit of recording at home. And mm -hmm. I'm quite lucky that I'm able to do that. And, and you know, I, 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 was, I think I was fairly productive over lockdown and um, I just kept, kept working and kept I mean, it, it's kind of good in a way, in a weird way, because it gives, it's a, it's a chance the way I see it. It's an option to try new things and do different projects that maybe you were putting off or because you thought, because you didn't have time because you were touring or gigging or whatever. So yeah, yeah. that's the way I've been approaching it. OK, good stuff. Well, look, uh, congratulations on being number 18 and getting in above Lancome. Obviously, <laughs> I'm sure they. I'm sure they won't mind the Lancome guys. I'm sure they. I'm sure they'll be fine with that. Uh, we, we, we're going to hear from you, and uh, you've recorded a song for us. And um, I think uh, you will introduce this uh, for us um, uh, when we see what you've done. I think you introduced it at the time, didn't you? So um, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, so, yeah. Nice to talk to you, Joshua. Yes. Okay, and uh, here's Joshua playing some music for us. Uh, this song is called Driving Alone in the City at Night. Driving alone in the city at night I thought I saw you caught in the high branches of a beech tree bowling in the bluster Of the big houses of solicitors mm -hmm. built at the end of the twentieth century. Computers were big, everybody was wealthy, and the horror of it all flew into my vision like an oil for its dinner with lethal precision in some crucial law of quantum mechanics One cannot be here whilst over there So you must remain my kind brother Yes, you must remain my sweet brother Until then Surely all of our smiling skeletons are gently uncovered by smiling Americans. And all is explained how we came to such unfortunate endings. By the cracks in our skulls and the dull gall arrows in our around us, smoke rising from the edge of the pit. 
its flood I'm not upright in light of it all Uh, there you go, Joshua Burnside. Uh, thanks to Joshua for uh, joining us tonight from Northern Ireland, um, as I said, as is uh, one of our next guests, um, our half of the breath. Uh, Rena Connolly here is from uh, Northern Ireland, now settles in uh, Manchester in uh, the um, Levensume district. She had a baby a year ago, showing me pictures of the little one, looking gorgeous, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so Rena Connolly uh, is here uh, in partnership with Stuart McCollum and uh, they are the breath and it was a bittersweet moment last year at the Radio 2 Folk Awards because Rena won a Folk Singer of the Year but was uh, poorly that night and so couldn't perform and so uh, you know it was going to be a big time for last year with the Folk Festival here and everything but um, anyway thankfully every, all is well and they are here with us now and um, you know Folk Singer of the Year whether you were there or not you still won it. You were there in spirit, absolutely. Um, uh, so, um, uh, absolutely captivating and intoxicating prospect live, The Breath. Uh, so, uh, Rhianna Connolly, uh, Stuart McCullum, The Breath. Worn out, brazen lost lovers, holding on. For his ten to hide all his secrets and born under covers. Heaven is like poisoned your parents' bed, hanging on. Cowards out My heart Pulls his colors out To Get on with it. Tuning takes too long these days, I think. So you're supposed to fill the gap. I'm going to say something right now. Yeah. Yeah. Am I on some? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
The thing I've, been, I've missed most about gigging is annoying Rainer by tuning. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Must have tasted. All right. This is called Boot Song. Stolen from home, lost the night. Taken by fire, taste and their flight. And the rattle and creak, boards neath their feet, buried. Scars underneath, and the sea is wide. They cannot forgo it, and long is the tide that has taken thee. So sing them a boat song. Keep them safe, let them be unafraid. For dark are the hearts that lead them to the graves. Lot of souls in the tide, they turn to the shore where the ring of hand. The sea is wide. They cannot forgo it. And long is the time that has taken me. That has taken me, taken me. That has taken me. So sing them up. Everybody, thank you. Um, we're gonna finish off. Um, now that I've got all that bad temper out of my system, we're gonna finish off with only stories. Thanks very much for having us. It means a lot.
shadows When the red are cheap Hiding fires Flickered fire Summer red Pieces of me Lost at sea Out on the tide Here The yearly wheels Of wild The only stories My mother told The breath. Thanks a lot, lovely to see you. Thanks so much, cheers, Stuart. Thank you. Um, such a unique and special atmosphere that they create. It's, uh, it's, it's fabulous. Thank you very much to the breath. Um, so here we go then. Um, uh, the all-important countdown uh, right to the coveted number one slot in the, uh, in the first official folk album charts. Let's go back over to Matthew again to find out the all-important top ten. At number 10, the Lost Words Spell Songs, a folk supergroup inspired by Robert McFarlane and Jackie Morris's beautiful Lost Words book. Seth Lakeman is at number 9, marking the 400th anniversary of the Mayflower sailing with his album A Pilgrim's Tale. Like singing on his sad and mournful air. What wondrous love is this? At eight, the great Shirley Collins returns to songs she first sang in her 20s on her album Heart's Ease. What wondrous love is this, oh my soul? Hello. At seven, it's Jamie Webster's love letter to Liverpool FC on the album called Boss. See, I go to the devil, and the devil's 
at six, Faye Hill's magical, mystical album, Rackline. I go to the devil in the devil's name and stay till I come home again. The party is a delicate... At five, Stick in the Wheel continue effortlessly to fuse the ancient and modern in Hold Fast. the guy, but if the curly nap pass and the lorry's promised tight, and then they rob us to the wit and it's hardly worth a mile. At four, the levellers react to a world teetering on the brink of self-destruction in peace. At three, Kate Rusby's second entry, this time her brilliant cover versions of modern classics in Hand Me Down. At number two, Laura Marling ruminates on modern femininity in A Song for Our Daughter. So who is number one in the very first official folk albums chart? That honour goes to the people's poet Jamie Webster with his second entry, We Get By. He says the album documents working-class life with a few chords, a bit of passion and a lot of the truth. So congratulations, Jamie. You're number one. Uh, Jamie, hello. Hello. Hey. Well, I'm all right. Uh, You're number one in the charts, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, it's come out of nowhere, really, didn't it? I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm, honestly, I'm just absolutely made up. Just, uh, you know, some of the names in there. Even Laura, you know, like she's a massive, massive folk artist. Do you know what I mean? To, to be up there, number one, it's, it's something I've always dreamed of, having my album or some of my work with a number one next to it. So, yeah. yeah, for the first, first time in my life, yeah. Thanks very much to yeah. everyone who made it possible. And not only that, you're also, what was it, number seven, was it, as well, I think? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a good couple of releases, I'll say. Um, it's yeah. been an un- unbelievable year, yeah. And, yeah, I've enjoyed every minute of making both the albums. You know, it's, it's a dream to be able to do it and to have people listen to them and relate to them in the way that they have. That's why... That's why I write songs, you know, to bring people together. And it's, uh, it, yeah, it's just honestly, it's it's such a, in such a such a dark time, such a little, you know, light at the end of the tunnel for me having this. It's I, I think I think I needed it, you know what I mean? But yeah, uh, yeah. yeah it's great. I mean, folk music is a term that you know it, it, it encompasses all sorts of styles and everything. If there is one thing that sort of unites uh, the the songwriting, it, it it is sort of documenting the lives of the working classes and the people that you sort of see in your everyday life. I mean, that's been the same throughout the different ages. That's very much what you're trying to do, isn't it? Document the life around you. Yeah, yeah. I think it's 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 story of it's stories rather of of all of life's quirks. You know that we. We all go through living this working class life. I mean, before I started doing my music full time, I worked as soon as I left school on a, on a building site for ten years. You know, and that really, that really put me in touch with with real life. And you know, I, I had to, you know, I literally, that that's the life that I lived for a long time. And I was writing stories, writing songs the whole time whilst I was I was doing that job and living that life. And you know, I shared this and still do share the same escapes that we all share in order to to break out of the daily grind, if you like, in the nine to five. And that's what I thought I'd, I'd write me, me album about. I'd say it, it best describes the, you know, the struggles, the the joys and the escapes of work class life. And yeah, I'm just thankful that so many other people seen it that way as well. And even months after the release, I'm still getting so many nice messages on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, just telling me so many different things. Some people like, like I've said, some people like listening to it to escape. A few people have told me that it's got them through a few bad times, so that's always a nice positive, you know. Um, and, yeah, other people are telling me it's keeping them sane, so that's nice as well. So, uh, you know, in a time like this, I think we all need music, and 
it was never a question for me to delay my release because of all this going on. And I think that's what we all need music in this time. We all need we all need to get out there and escape what we face, what the, the reports that we face every day. And sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're a relatively young guy. Does it feel like it's happened quickly, this, or does it feel to you like it's taken some time to gather pace? Well, I mean, I've been doing this. I've been playing in bands since I was 15. I'm 26 now. Granted, it's, it hasn't been a lifetime, but it's been 10 years or so, you know, of, of hard work, playing all sorts of different types of venues and you know, trialing different types of songs with and without bands. It's been, it has been a long journey, but, you know, I, I, feel, I still remember my first gig like it was yesterday. So, um, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been a really enjoyable one, really. I couldn't, couldn't fault, I wouldn't change a thing. You know, no. it's uh, set me in good stead for what's to come. And yeah, I'm just, this, if anything, it's just given me so much confidence to, to believe that I can do it and, and can carry on doing it and hopefully, you know, be one of the greats you never know yeah well okay yeah aim high i mean do you usually perform on your own or do you have other people who play with you yeah i mean i did for a i played with the band at the very first sort of performances and then for a large for about eight or nine years i've predominantly played on my own but now since doing the album I've, I've got a band behind me again and i think that's where i'm strongest when i've got a full you know wall of sound behind me that i can perform to and i can really capture the emotion and the stories that i'm trying to tell and yet, I'm, I'm just yet. Yeah, that's the way I'm going to go from now on. I think. Who are who, let, tell us some of the singers and people, not necessarily you know folk artists, but just some of the the, the singers and songwriters who, who who first impressed you as a kid. Yeah, well, as you can probably gather, I'm I'm from Liverpool. So. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, how's the derby so, been today for you? Have you, have, uh, have, 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 I, yeah. not, not very good. I'm a Liverpool fan. Um, we, we took a few injuries. and I know, but you know, Everton, Everton are doing well. A point away. You, you set, anyway, never mind. Let's, let's never worry about mind, that no. another day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, some, of the, some of the singers and songwriters who you liked, who was, who, who was your big idol when you were growing up? Yeah, I think at first it was, it was the Beatles and Oasis sort of woke me up to music. Like most kids from my generation, that, yeah. that was where, that's where they fell into it. Then people like the Coral. I love the stories told in the Coral's music. You know, I think Bill Mackay was one of the yeah. songs that I heard. And I don't know if you're familiar with that, Mark. But I am, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was one that just spoke to me. I thought, wow, what a story they've told yeah. there. You know, it's, it's a brilliant piece of music as well. And that opened the door to stuff like, so my main influence, I'd say, is Bob Dylan. Yeah. Um, I'd say he, he was the one who really, he put his on, on, on my neck. He made them stand up. You know, it just... He spoke to me in so many different ways, more than anything else. He gave me the belief to to write music in the way that I do because I think I read something by him that said I've got you know similar to what I said. I've got four, chord, I've got three chords in the truth. Yeah, uh, what are your three? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 and yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. Just woke me up to it, and you know I think the way that if you listen to some of Bob Dylan's music, some of the stories he's telling, even though he wrote them in the sixties and seventies, they're still very, very, very relevant right now absolutely and absolutely. and i think that's that's what that, that's what i always that's what i try to go for okay. in, with a lot of songs you all know right. what i mean i try and capture things that are happening Good. all right all well, well listen it's lovely to talk to you and congratulations you can Thanks uh, very you much. treat yourself to a little drink or something to uh, celebrate <laughs> tonight twice in the top 10 um uh, continued success jamie we'll talk again i'm sure Take it easy, mate. Bye-bye. Uh, so there we go. That is uh, Jamie Webster, who is number one in the first ever um, official folk album charts. And uh, so congratulations uh, to him. Uh, right. OK, uh, we're going to have some music to um, uh, close proceedings, but um, uh, we've got a couple of people to talk to who are going to be taking part in that. It's going to be Faye Heald and her band. Um, one of uh, Faye's band is Sam Sweeney. You're in, the, you're in the charts, Sam. What number were you? You 27. were number 27. 27, the day of my birth. 27. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with uh, On Earth Repeat. So, um, um, and, yeah, I mean, we were talking to Shirley. Con I mean, I'm glad Shirley's in the top 10 as well. Yeah, yeah. We were pleased about that. But, I mean, you know, uh, it, it does feel good making an album and being in the top 30, doesn't it? Yeah, it feels fantastic. I wasn't, honestly wasn't expecting it because it came out in March and it feels really nice and... and Genuinely quite a surprise that an album of slightly self-indulgent instrumental English music could, could make a chart of any kind, to be honest. So, yeah, really delighted. Well, what, what else have you been up to to keep yourself busy during lockdown? 
Uh, I've actually been teaching a lot, as yeah. have lots of people, and it's been really nice. I've been doing some stupid pop song covers with Jen Butterworth and Rob Harbour, and that's been good fun. <laughs> uh, and a streamed, streamed gig with my band, streamed gig with Leverett, um, and writing some new material for my band. So if, right. if, if gigs come back... There will be some new material you've got, at some you've point. You've got yeah. a set ready, yeah. yeah. OK, well, congratulations on Thanks, being in the charts. Lovely to see you. Um, uh, and uh, uh, keep in social distance. Faye Heald, hey. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Oh, you just missed the top five. Are you no, gutted? No, gutted. Totally gutted. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, Rackline, it's a, it's a fascinating album. Rackline, I do know, is where all the uh, detritus gets left on the beach and the tide line, doesn't it? It so, is, yeah. The so, bit that I like is the bit between that and the water, the kind of no man's land. It's not sea, it's not land. It's that space between. Was this, was, was the whole concept inspired by sort of windswept walks along beaches? Well, it's not the water, it's the kind of... So you've got supernatural stuff on one side and humans on the other. Yeah. And I sort of see art as that bit in between where you, you play with them both and try and make sense of them in that weird no-man's land. Yeah. yeah, all right, so it's kind of, you know, the, the, that, that hinterland, just that shadow land between reality and the sort of, you know, the, the, the darker side. Yeah, so the album's got ghost stories, fairies, witches, talking animals, you know, stuff that we don't really understand but would really yeah. quite like to, I guess. Yeah. How is it for you? I mean, you've, you've actually had the band together for a little bit, haven't you? You did something, I think, for, uh, for Radio 3 this week. So you are managing to do something. You've done some streamed concerts as well. You've managed to get together. Third time we've done it, and every time is an absolute joy. I can't, you know, you can't explain the feeling. I was so excited about pulling into the loading bay. You know, yeah. the little things that I'm missing. Reverb. Oh, it's amazing. Hearing your voice with reverb. Yeah. Yeah, OK. What are you going to be singing for us? What are you going to be playing for us to close the show tonight? We'll do three tracks from Rackline. We've got Hairspell, Cruel Mother and Call the Storm. OK, lovely. Right, well, uh, you take your position, Faye. Thank you very much and congratulations with um, uh, Rackline uh, for uh, being number six. Uh, in the charts. So uh, that's more or less it, apart from the wonderful music that we're going to finish with. Uh, the new charts will be published on the first Monday of every month at four o'clock. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see them on the English Folk Expo website and on the official charts company website. It's all proper this, you know, and uh, they'll be announced as part of Folk on Foot's official folk albums chart show available um, but whenever you get your podcasts or on YouTube, if you want to get the charts in your inbox, sign up to the English Folk Expo mailing list on their website. I should tell you that English Folk Expo are a charity who support the wider folk music sector with initiatives like these charts and lots more. This work is made possible with the support of funders and partners and you. If you would like to support this work, you can buy a T-shirt or even sign up to the special online folk platform EFEX Digital, pronounced FX Digital, which includes great online content and ticket discounts for folk music concerts and events when they return, which they will. Um, and it will include the Manchester Folk Festival. We hope to be here and restored in all our glory next year. A limited number of festival passes for the Manchester Folk Festival in October next year are now on sale. So, there we go. Congratulations to everyone who's made this inaugural chart and thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's been a joy just to be listening to music and sharing it with people here at home in Manchester. So, um, wonderful times. It's been a great night and we will leave you in the company of Faye Heald. I shall go into, go into a heart With sorrow, sigh, and with medical care I shall go into, go into a heart With sorrow, sigh, and with medical care I go to the devil in the devil's name And stay till I come home again I go to the devil in the devil's name And stay till I come home again I shall go into, go into a hair With sorrow, sigh, and the blackest throw I shall go into, go into a crow With sorrow, sigh, and the blackest throw I go 
to the devil in the devil's name and stay till I come home again. I go to the devil in the devil's name and stay till I come home again. I shall go into, go into a cat with sorrow, sigh and a jet black shot. I shall go into, go into a cat with Black shot and I go to the devil in the devil's name and stay till I come home again. I go to the devil in the devil's name and stay till I come home again. actual spell that was told by a woman called Isabel Gowdy in her trial for being a witch uh, in Scotland in 1662. She told this spell. Um, that's what she used to do, to change into animals, to run away from her husband and go and do the work of the devil. So I thought that needs reviving. Uh, yeah, so the next one is, again, it's based on folklore and stories, but this is a new song. This is a song called Call the Storm, and it's based on the myths of Selkies, these seal people who can shed their skin and come on land. And this is a moment towards the, the end of this Selkie's relationship with her human husband and her children on land, and she's torn whether she should sail back to sea to be with her Selkie people or stay with her babies. Call the Storm. I go back to walk by the river mouth Dream of salt water on my skin But to die the way would cause the boat to keel Turning the tide on kith and kin Sing so I can swim. Where out on the sea would my children swim? Can't take them deep if I go. Come break free 
not a Thank you very much. And we'd like to close this epic show, this inaugural adventure into folk chartdom uh, with a proper folk song. This is a, a song called The Cruel Mother. There are many, many versions of this song by loads of different singers. And this is our version. It's a, it's a really disturbing and horrible song of a, a poor woman who's caught pregnant out of wedlock in a time when that was not forgiven. And uh, she murders her babies and quite often the ghosts come back and they're really quite unpleasant to her. So I've put a different spin on it and it's more to me about the, the sense of grief and just personal ah-ness that the woman must have felt being in that situation rather than piling it on with other society and ghostly pressures as well. So a slight twist on the cruel mother. Thanks so much. See you again. She leaned her bark against the nose, first it bent and then it broke. She leaned her bark against the floor, and there she has two bonny babes born. Smile not, smile not, my bonny babes. Smile not so sweet, you'll smile me to my grave. She talk and I both long and sharp and pressed it to the tender heart. And the streams, they flow so clear. She's pulled her gown up on her hand. She wrapped them fine as they lay down. She dug a grave beyond the sun and buried them deep neath marble stone. For the Lord to walk upon. And the streams, they flow so She's walked the woods on a moonlit night. She saw two babes all dressed in white. She walked the halls, both wan and pale. What ailed our lady? Oh.